After 18 years, the Super Monkey Ball franchise finally came back, with some mixed results. I personally haven't played neither of the Banana Blitz games, so I won't be criticizing them, but it does have my new favorite character. Four years later, it seemed like we finally got the remake we've been waiting for, but is it any good? Watch the video to find out. Mate with Unity Oh no! This doesn't look bad. I like the main menu theme which was made for this game. While cheesy, it is really good. From the main menu we can select the main mod and party mod. Let's go with main mod first. In the main mod you can choose story. You're probably going to play that first to unlock the levels in practice mod and challenge mod. You can also unlock other game mods from the point shop, such as all the DX levels. More on that later. So there's already plenty of content. I'm glad. Let's check out the story mode first. Right off the gate, the cutscenes in this game have been downgraded into these comic strips. Little disappointing, not gonna lie. So Dr. Badgoon has sucked all the bananas with his sucking machine and now it's up to our heroes to bring them back. I think I understood that very clearly. Before we get to the gameplay, let's explain the rules that I just made up. I will not be checking courses where I don't have anything to say, as in the really easy levels. I also played bits of the original game on Dolphin Emulator, so I can notice the differences when it comes to the physics. And these physics sure feel different, unlike in the original game where you slowly build up your momentum. This thing has fast acceleration. First level and I can already skip most of it. There's not much to say here, easy levels, baby steps. These get way more challenging though once you try to beat these levels as fast as possible under certain time, which is displayed in missions. Now this is a nitpick but how hard is it to program idle animations? They might not be important to some, but to me, it gives characters more personality. Now Volcanic Magma is where it gets just a bit difficult, meaning at this point it's going to be harder to speedrun some of these when I'm still a beginner. But it does have super fun slide and a really fast downhill one. And this level where you need to avoid tobacco? What is this? Inchworms, however, is a level that requires good timing. That's the one thing I lack. Totalitarianism can be also difficult if you get crushed, but it's not as hard as the other try not to get crushed levels. This one and many others took me some time because I totally missed the forward button behind me. It's right there, how could I miss it? These buttons will be featured in more levels, so keep an eye on them. Onto the ocean level and first level in and it's already more difficult. Still pretty fun though. What's not fun is this damn spinning gear level. It's not impossible but again, timing is everything. We skip stepping stones to talk about dribblers. Yes, we are getting into another try not to get crushed loop and it ain't easy. Also, these stone textures look weird. I know it's supposed to reflect water on them but still, weird. Push bar. Fun fact, not only is this level boring and easy, but in the original it had a website printed on it that probably no longer works. Mad Rings. It's not too hard if you go only for the blue goal, but it gets way more irritating, especially in the golden banana game mod. Good luck trying to get all of them without blasting off. We skip curly options cause we'll have more of these balanced levels that test my fear of heights. But it does feel satisfying completing it. It's the stuff like this that makes Super Monkey Ball hard, yet fun. I don't have much to say about the free levels, but they're good. I like the Twisting Tunnel one, it's like art project coming to life. Basically visually appealing. Inside a Veil is my least favorite zone in the game. It is because I lack skills, true, but I don't really enjoy much levels in here, not even in the original. These first levels are okay, we have Pro Skater, Giant Cum, Beehive, and a maze level that builds itself. Okay, that's actually creative. Launchers. This level, I swear, I will never be able to hit the green gob. You get launched off and hope that you land on top of the um, tree. I don't care if I'm bad because this is one of my least favorite levels to replay. Finally, only took like 30 tries. Okay, I will admit that I have no clue how to clear current slots faster, so I won't be complaining about that. Seesaw Bridges, honestly isn't too bad? It grown on me. 
It can be frustrating on first playthrough, but as long as I keep momentum on the last section, it's not too bad. Anthropod. All I'm gonna say is that it's more difficult in the original, but I wanna explore the next area. If you like amusement park rides without seatbelts, this level is for you. It's colorful and has toy room feel to it. This is where the next gimmick is introduced, where you basically teleport to different section. Mad Chuckle is about timing again, but I like how it's used here more. These crazy stairs are also another visually stunning levels, really like these effects. Now here's the fun one, it's like trampolines that shoot you up and you need to land on one of the goals. I even tried to go for the red goal and I successfully did it, just don't ask how many tries it took. Fluctuation Super Monkey Ball 2 has like 3 levels that involve slowly moving boxes. I think they're boring. Fight me. Overall, rather easy on the colorful amusement park background and set pieces. In the cutscene, Dr. Bad Bunny uses some kind of laser blaster to make our heroes small. He then tries to boil them alive? I'm sorry, what? Anyways, they escape and now we're in boiling pot area. Appropriate name, cause some of these curses can make one boil with rage. Combination for a first time player like me was again really frustrating, but like I said before, these, these buttons, buttons will be featured, featured in more levels. Yeah, I totally missed that one. I feel stupid. We have another pair of stairs and while it looks easy, it's not as easy to keep your balance. What I did was take it slow because I'm scared to fall off. Here's more of balancing challenge and of course, I took the easier route. I don't have enough experience to do the thinner routes. Cliffs is a fun level this time around, as you need to carefully jump from ramp to ramp while each ramp gets thinner. I'm gonna skip the two levels to finally talk about my least favorite monkey ball level ever. That is not an exaggeration. Switch Inferno is downright dumb. I'm lucky this game has helper option, otherwise I would have no idea how to solve this puzzle. If you can even call it puzzle. There's a bunch of switches and you need to press only two. It has to be the right one or it's game over for you. Well, that sure was annoying, but you know what isn't? This bridge level, because you can go to the edge of the bridge. I love cheating! Washing machine is at home to a cutscene where in the original you could see Dr. Badbun naked. Good agree. Spiral bridge. This spiral spins faster than in the original, which makes this level less enjoyable to me. Thankfully there are good levels in this, like obstacles. You take the elevator and then drop down with a lot of speed to reach the goal. Go! Domino is very really easy by the dominoes, and the way they fall down is so satisfying to look at. Flock can be a little difficult because of the time limit, but it's possible. Double spiral. You have two routes and only one has goal. Can you choose the correct route? This spiral is great unlike the first one before. Hierarchy. Is that right? You're basically falling down to the goal. It ain't easy, so watch your step. 8 bracelets is awesome. Since you can't go through loops like Blue Blur, you instead have to jump from each bracelet to the next one while keeping your momentum. I feel like I said that so many times. My only issue is the camera, so if you're playing the remake, I recommend turning off the camera controls. Yes! With this washing machine level done, it's time for industrial one. The last zones is where I died more than I can count. But let's keep it moving cause we're entering the clock tower. And yes, I bought Suezo. I just can't resist, okay? Pistons can be piss hard, cause one wrong move and you're blasting off again. And yes, I used hints. Sue me. Switches return, but this time it's used for more interesting purposes. Entangle pad and vortex especially. You need to carefully move all the way to the end while not trying to fall down. Warp, however, looks very really easy, but it's not. Not to mention that you need to avoid these pinball bouncers. Ray hard, I need to practice this course more in both versions. Trampoline is fine, it's not as fun as the amusement park level, but it's still good. The final level is surprisingly easy, which is funny because most of the area was trying to prepare me for what's to come. Space Colony is not messing around. I even had to use the replay feature because of how many times I failed to my doom. While this one I need to practice more to even reach the other goals, gross floors will test your patience. You will think that faster acceleration will make this level easier, but even then it's hard. 
even on the last section I'm hanging for my dear life. I feel like my analog stick is going to sneak. Spinning saw also took a couple of tries, but with the right timing it becomes easy. And in chipped pipes, feels satisfying to pull off. I even got to the green ball. Corkscrew is another super fun slide. That's it, I had a blast. I just love these slide levels. Air hockey. No thanks. <laughs> you stupid! <laughs> well, guess we better stop Dr. Barbun before he fills bananas with spicy curry. These next levels feel huge, and you could easily run out of time really fast, but what you need to know is the right path. 3D maze is unique. It's this rotating maze that feels like a perplexus puzzle except not as crazy. It's creative. What is crazy is another maze. Come on, why do I need to solve another one? And this one isn't easy, you need to think fast before time runs out. I'm sure there's faster way to do this, but I'm not that good. This level is more similar to 3D Maze. I took the leap of faith and eventually landed. Again, I love it because of how much it reminds me of those puzzle toys. Invisible is hard, at least for first time player like me. I eventually did it without the helper. It wasn't as hard as I thought, so let's move on. The last stage is last stage. Shaped like a heart showing Dr. Badboon's obsession with Mimi. That's creepy. Here's something interesting. In the original game, it was a big Avenge game slogan, the original developers for the Super Monkey Ball games. With Dr. Badboon defeated, our heroes can finally enjoy bananas without spicy curing. Finn. Now, remember how I was complaining that this game has no idle animations? Well, I was surprised to find out that the new jump ability has animations for all characters. And even better, in photo mod, you can change their expressions. Well, not for all characters, but this is still cool. That was the main game, but what about the rest? Well, aside from the arcade Super Monkey Ball 1 2 levels, which I still need to finish, there's more mods to unlock in Point Shop. You can purchase them with Lego stats. You get them by completing missions, like clear the best time, collect a certain amount of bananas, and clear goals. Reverse mod is exactly how it sounds. It's the same levels but reversed. It can be challenging. In Dark Banana mod, you need to avoid every banana in the level or it's game over for you. The opposite happens in Golden Banana mod, where you instead need to collect every banana under time limit. It's also my preferred way of exploring maze levels, since you need to collect everything. Original mod has the original layout from the Super Monkey Ball games. That's it, harder levels. Oh god, the launchers are back. And now for the DX mod, the one I've been excited about ever since the game was announced. Let's go through my favorites. Swirl. Go around and finish the maze before the time runs out. Gutter. Stick to the rail and maintain your balance. Rear field. Run as fast before, before the time, time runs, runs out. out. Catwalk. Test your balance skills here. Now this is how you do catapult level and not like the tree level. Get launched and roll downhill. Coil and waver. This is where your speed gets useful. Hound tooth. Great for practicing these checkered floors. Building is a parking lot level where not much happens. It looks cool visually. Same goes for DNA. Cliff. Slowly move around the cliff like a ninja. Slow down, slow down. Let's talk about Paraboloid. You need to collect all the bananas, but there are also 4 golden ones. And getting them wasn't easy. It took many tries, but I can confirm that it's possible to do these jumps without using the jump ability. But by the time I got them, there's so little time to collect the rest. You can still finish this level, even if you get time over. Dodge Maze is a pretty neat level. It might just be my favorite maze level so far. You bump into these small doors and find your way out. Mobius is this conveyor belt racetrack and it's fun. And that's all my favorite levels. The last stage is Asterisk, but that's about it. Let's take a look at the party games because I have a lot to say about them. I can get used to the physics in the main game, but the party games? Not so much. Monkey Race. Thankfully Monkey Race is a good one. 
You can do single races or even take on the challenge of doing Grand Prix. You got bronze, silver and gold. You're doing all of them. You can use powers to take out your opponents like Ice Blocks, Banana Peel Classic, Crystal Shards, Booster, Humming Rockets, and Bomb Style can stun players. You also have this power up that makes your ball bigger. To be honest, the summon power up I don't find useful. But overall, it's great. And with each Grand Prix, the tracks get more difficult. Oh, and remember how I said that you can stun players with bombs? Well, they can do the same. Quickly wiggle the left analog stick before you fall off. <coughs> Monkey fight! You have 5 arenas to choose from. The rules are simple. Whoever knocks out the player from the arena the most, wins. This will be really great for multiplayer. And well, it does have multiplayer. You need a friend to play with in real life because this game has no online multiplayer. You had one job, Sega. Hey, let's talk about the power ups. They give you different boxing gloves, such as the one with spring and golden glove. It's a fun mini game, but again, will be even better with online multiplayer. But oh well. Monkey target. If you ask any Super Monkey Ball fan what their favorite minigame is, they probably will answer it Monkey Target, and for good reason. You try to get the best score by safely landing on these targets while collecting bananas in air. It's great! In the original. You know where this is going. Look, I may have only played Super Monkey Ball Adventures, which alone makes my opinions automatically incorrect. But at least the Monkey Target controls felt good there. But in Banana Mania, they don't feel good at all. It feels like trying to learn a play. And I sort of get it, but at the same time, it's supposed to be a fun arcade party game. Not a realistic flight simulator. Spinning wheel is added, which can either give you more bonuses or obstacles like spikes. Or even change the weather. But no matter how much I try in this version, it won't work. Skill issue or not, they ruined one of the best minigames in the franchise, and it's a shame. But! They added something new worth talking about. Formation mod. A single player only mod where you assemble all 5 monkeys and control them at the same time. And if you land correctly, you can get some big score. Again, with better controls, this could have easily been the definitive version of monkey target. But that's not happening. Monkey billiards. While this version doesn't have the iconic investor team with eye eye drinking milk, it instead goes for bar aesthetic. And honestly, this fits more. As for the game, it's good. It has different game modes, but they're almost similar to each other. Score more than your opponent. Only complaint will be that the ball physics can look weird. Monkey bowling. I like bowling in real life, so this already is a fun minigame. And sure, you have your stand on bowling. But to spice things up, there's special mode where each course gets harder and harder. The ground starts moving or wiggling, and you need to keep your balance to hit successful strike. Monkey Golf. This one might be a bit biased, but golf isn't my favorite. Though in Monkey Ball it ain't bad because it also has some creative courses. However, in Mini Golf it's a different story. All the crazy holes and stuff make it more interesting. Like this awesome half pipe course. Yeah. Monkey Ball. Like Monkey Race, you have Grand Prix mode where you race in all three tracks. You control the ball by tapping the shoulder buttons. And the controls feel great. Good game this time around. Monkey Shark, good old arcade shooter. Each round gets more difficult, especially the boss in Blind Monkey. It shoots itself and shoots high amount of homing missiles. It felt satisfying finally beating it. Other bosses are this weird spider and octopus with pot on its head. I love this minigame because it reminds me of old arcade games. Monkey Rock Fight, it's like monkey shoot but you look on other players, not much here to say. Next, Monkey Sucker. It plays like your usual sports game that gets released every year. Well, that joke didn't age well. Oops, oops. However, this might be another problem of mine, because I switch between my teammates, but I can control the goalkeeper at all. Aside from that, this is a perfectly fine soccer game. And no, sadly, I didn't win the game. There's also a penalty shot where you can practice the basics. Interestingly, that's where I won. Monkey Baseball. I'm not good at baseball at all. But I must give them credit for trying something new with the sport. Spinning wheel is back, which changes the layout of the home run ramps. You also have to watch out for the obstacles, which you can actually control. Not bad. Monkey Tennis. Last sports game that I actually like. It's tennis. But sometimes you get this star icon on the floor, 
which will make your shots much more powerful. So in a way, it's kind of like Sega Superstars Tennis without the all-star moves. That was all the party games. Now it's time for a conclusion. My final score is 7 out of 10. This is a good game, don't get me wrong, but it's far from perfect. This is something a lot of remakes suffer from. They feel different to control. Sometimes it can bring the whole experience down. That doesn't mean you shouldn't try this game, because even without the DLCs, there is a lot to unlock. Although paying for music seems like a stretch. I had a great time playing this game. And despite me being negative on part games, stuff like Monkey Riffs can still bring a lot of enjoyment. Thanks for watching, and see you next game. I love cheating.